And a closer look now at the situation in Thailand with Kevin Hewison from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He joins us live from Perth. Kevin, you know, the, this um, emergency decree banning mass gathering, do you think it's a surprising move from the authorities given that they've been relatively tolerant of the protests over the past few months? Well, I think the events yesterday have uh, forced them, forced their hands somewhat. Um, we use the term unprecedented a lot, but the events yesterday where a royal motorcade was um, uh, went through a, a group of protesters and who hurled abuse at it is something that we haven't seen in Thailand ever before, I think. So that's forced the government's hand. Well, this morning's arrests haven't seemed to scare off the demonstrators. Hundreds are back on the streets. Now, how do you expect this to play out? Well, the kinds of movements that we've seen in various places over the last uh, few years are not the movements of um, even 10 years ago. These have lots of different nodes, lots of different leaders. So the arrest of some today has really just motivated those that you're seeing on the streets tonight uh, to demand their release and has brought out tens of thousands of people even though there's a draconian law in place and risking arrest again. What are the chances then of a harsh crackdown by police? It's possible. Um, the, the, the standoff that we have at the moment is that the protesters are saying that they're not going to go away. Uh, they're using tactics that the military-backed government hasn't had to deal with previously. And the military is backed into a corner because they are in strong support of the monarchy. And um, we've had news today, for example, that the monarch has left Bangkok in an unscheduled visit to the northeast of the country. So it's suggesting that there may well be uh, clashes in the offing. Hopefully not, but uh, it's entirely possible, especially given the history of clashes in Thailand over the last 10 to 15 years. You know, the anti-government movement is driven by young uh, protest leaders. Uh, why are they so determined to fight for change now? It's not especially clear why the young people have come out at this time. Um, one of the motivating factors is the election last year where the party that appealed most to young people was dissolved soon after it did very, very well in the election. And that caused a lot of people concern, but also opened the eyes of a lot of young people, I think. And the demonstrations that have that have taken place sort of post-COVID lockdown have grown in size and have expanded and have drawn together a whole range of issues, not just government and the monarchy, but uh, all kinds of issues of the LGBT community, the way that students are treated in schools and so on. So there's a whole bunch of issues that have come together to cause the students to be defiant towards this military-backed government. And speaking of COVID-19, the economy has been crippled by the pandemic. Will this political unrest impact the country's recovery then? Probably, although the economy is doing very badly anyway. Thailand has been so dependent on tourism, and of course there's virtually none at the moment. Uh, they've gone from uh, 30, 40 million visitors a year to almost zero. So the economy is in serious trouble anyway. Um, but of course, uh, political unrest in any country has economic impacts as well. The students, of course, have criticised the government for its poor economic management, particularly during the COVID crisis.